What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the MMA Complex. My name is Josh. And I'm James. And it is uh, Wednesday, what, June? 21st. 21st. First day of summer. Yeah, first official day of summer. Yeah. And we could feel it out here in Southern California. It's God. pretty hot, right? Yeah, coming to your house, I was like dying. Right? It's like so hot outside. <laughs> I mean, here in California, especially where we live, it gets... It stays hot to about at least the beginning of October. Yeah. Even though, you know, fall starts, it's so, it's so hot. And then this past couple of days, it's been up upper 90s. Yeah. And then uh, June is kind of like, a majority of it's foggy. And yeah, people it's are gloomy. surprised when they come to Southern California when it's June cloudy outside, yeah. and it's cloudy. It's, and it's how it is all the time. Pretty much. August is the worst month of the year. But I think, I think today is the longest day of the year as well. Today is the longest day of mm-hmm. the year? Really? Yeah. So. I didn't know that. It might be a uh, sun till the show tonight. Maybe. That's right. We have a we have a concert to get to after we record here. Yeah. So it's a little later on tonight. It's a good lineup. You have Baby Metal, you have Stone Sour, and you have Corn headlining. It's a pretty good I, show. I, yeah, and I think there's like two other bands before. Two other bands before. I think uh, I, Islander, Yellow, right? Yellow Wolf, and Islander. I think. Yeah. Which. I don't know who they are. I know I know who Yellow Wolf oh, is. Oh, you do? Yeah. Um, How are they? It's, it's all right. I mean, I think he's more of like a, I don't know, kind of like pop rock a little mm. bit, but a little rap mixed in. I, I don't know. Oh, interesting. I, I really haven't really delved into his mm. music all that much. Um, I've seen him before in person and not concert wise. I've actually seen him in person. And then, um, but I'm, I don't know how interested I am in getting to the show that early to see Two guys, the yeah. first two that I have, you know. Well, I think the show starts at six, so you probably get there at like a seven. Yeah, doors open at five thirty. It's gonna be at the uh, Alley Forum. Um, it's gonna be a good show. It's a, I think doors open at five thirty, and then the show starts at six. I'm assuming Baby Metal will probably start the main lineup around seven, and then that's what I'm thinking. A little after seven. Okay. Yeah, because the first two are gonna probably start off. Half hour shows each, mm. and maybe they don't, baby metal do like maybe forty five to an hour. That's what I'm thinking too. And then the final two will do like an hour each, an hour, an hour to an hour and a half each. Yeah. I think so. You can be there. Break like corn to probably be like two hours. I think maybe. So you be there at seven. I'm gonna. I'm. Mm, yeah, probably just before seven. Cause I don't. I, I don't want to miss them just in case they go on a little bit before. I don't know. Okay. I, I'm excited too, man, because uh, we haven't. I mean, other than the show, we've been having coming out, so I'm. I'm, I'm yeah, we re- we really get a chance to go out and do stuff, so yeah. But I do, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I I try to. Yeah, I do, but yeah, you don't. Schedule wise, we did. This yeah. is like the only time we usually make time. But um, uh, but yeah, it's it's gonna be a good show. I'm looking forward to that later on. I got some treats and all that stuff for the show later. So. Oh. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. oh, good. Oh, so. good. I think I'm not driving. <laughs> so, and then, um, uh, and then what else? A uh, lot of stuff to get to in the show today. We have uh, Steve Cozzola, uh, Bellator Lightweight. He's on the show today. We'll get to him shortly. Uh, thank you for Steve being on the show. Um, but first, we want to get to um, cover UFC Fight Night 111 that just happened this past weekend. You have Holly Holm finally getting a victory over... Um, over Beshko Hair and a pretty uh, stunning, you know, TKO knockout, pretty much. Uh, what did you think about the fight? Um, I think I kind of predicted the way it was going right. to finish. Um, I, I'm I'm happy for Holly Holm. I mean, it, it's good for not only for Holly Holm, but for the division in itself. Although Holly Holm, I mean, much needed win. Yeah, for Holly Holm. Exactly. Um, but you no, know, it was, it was kind of sad because I think. Um, I think it was John when was on the Aero show saying that this is do or die for Holly Holm. Mm-hmm. And so she was at a, at that point where if she can't beat Besh and she might walk away from the sport. I don't know how true that was, but that's what they were saying. Yeah. But I, think I that mean, would be pretty accurate. I mean, if you can't beat Besh, go ahead and you get stopped by her or like, uh, yeah, where do you go from there? I mean, where do you go from there? Yeah. Really? I mean, the fact that she won was good, but then she, she beat Besh. I mean, it doesn't do much for Holly, but. She got that one under her belt, so that, that's good. Yeah, yeah, mu- very. Um, it was a much needed victory for her. Uh, she looked good throughout the fight. You know, it was a 
back and forth fight for a little while. And then, I mean, she had landed a beautiful head kick and then finished her off with a single punch. And then that was it. You could tell emotionally afterwards that she is like, Thank she was God. Thank, thankful that she even, she got the victory. And I mean, if she would have went four in a row down four and a four and O oh, it could have been bad. I don't, yeah. I don't know what, you, how do you market her anymore? Yeah. I'm surprised Beth is on the UFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, she's she. I think she won her fight before this. I think. Okay. Right. So, but even before that, she was like down two or three. Yeah. So, I mean, she's. I guess a gatekeeper of the, of the division. Yeah, she. Yeah, she's kind of like the gatekeeper. She's kind of like the name. If you could beat her, then you, you probably go into top the, ten. You could go. Yeah, you go into the top ten. But uh, overall, the card the card is pretty good. As on the UFC Fight Pass. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was actually a pretty good, solid card overall um after the fight you have um you have holly who who was you know obviously emotional uh her coaches were all behind her all that stuff and then i just seeing her in the press conferences and all that is like you could tell that she you know talking about the roller coaster of hype that she had to go through and all that stuff and then and then coming through the losses that this was a much needed victory for her yeah for sure but but overall, I thought the fights were pretty good. It was pretty much the only event over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, it was the best main card um, of the um, of their fight pass. Yeah, uh, cards. Yeah, I think one of the best ones this year. I think for sure. But yeah, it was one card. But uh, overall, no. Um, sticking with the women's. Uh, shortly after, uh, maybe what a day or two later, you have um, the news that Cyborg in the one forty five pound division is back on track now. Um, Jermaine Deratame, the, the champ, has been stripped of her title. Um, no, I think I think people were kind of... They were surprised that the UFC actually went and did it, but, uh, I mean, Jermaine was even calling for them to do it, you know, because she mm -hmm. did not want to fight Cyborg. So mm -hmm. now it's 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 Cyborg against um, Megan Anderson for the 145-pound title. I think it's at UFC 214. Is that mm -hmm. what it is? Yeah. What do you think about when you heard that news that they stripped over her title? Did you think they were actually going to do it? Um, I didn't, um, but I'm glad they did. Yeah. I mean, someone that that doesn't want to fight uh, a Chinomo contender is, you know, should be stripped of the title. Yeah. The fact that she was talking about her going to 35, you know, is an indication that maybe she's only you know, she was she was content of winning that belt and that's it. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy that they 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 did they stripped her from her title and then she's going to fight you know Cyborg, a person that. The division should be built around, you know, she's mm -hmm. uh, the best women's fighter out there against uh, an up-and-coming Megan Anderson, uh, someone that is a 145-pound uh, champion and a victor, someone that yeah. has, that's been on the show many times as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's a good, uh, it makes sense to put that, that fight here in Anaheim because, you know, Cyborg, she's not from Orange County, but she lives in Orange County, mm -hmm. and she has a big fan base, and uh, yeah. I mean, when the UFC made that 145-pound division, it was for Chris Cyborg. And finally, yeah. she gets to be that queen if she gets uh, past Megan Anderson, which I think she has a pretty good chance of doing. I think she, yeah, definitely because I think Megan is still somewhat, um, I don't know. Getting, in, coming, in yeah, so she's ways. still much of a prospect in a lot of ways and coming into her own. Yeah. Um, she's, you know, she got the title over in Invicta. She looked really good in her run to get the title. Um, yeah, we interviewed way back when she basically started mm -hmm. over at Evicta. Um, and now that she's fighting for the title, she got the fight that she wanted. Uh, her chances against Cyborg are as good as anybody's chances against Cyborg, and they're, they're not that great. Um, the only thing that I think that helps her on, on, on Megan's side is the fact that she's a tall girl and that she's got, you know, pretty decent striking and, and, you know, Some power. she's a pretty all around decent fighter. And I think her size is going to help a lot because she is a tall girl. And I think Cyborg doesn't really come into, she doesn't run into a lot of girls that are as big or bigger than her, I think, which I think Megan is probably bigger than her. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think a, and a, a lot bigger than her because I think we got, we got to meet both of them um, at Cyborg's last Invicta fight or one of her last Invicta fights. And they were both on the same card. And um, yeah, just a Basically, just off memory, I think Megan's going to be the much bigger fighter. Yeah, for sure. So it's going to be interesting to see if Cyborg, how she handles the size difference. But it's going to, I think it's all going to 
see we're all looking to see if Megan can even weather the storm of Cyborg's ferociousness. You know? Yeah, that and the fact that Cyborg's already fought in the UFC. She had a couple fights under, but this is Megan Anderson's uh, first fight in the UFC under on the bright lights mm -hmm. on a very big card under DC and John Jones. A lot of eyeballs on Megan, so yeah. we'll see if that pressure gets to her. If, if she wins, I mean, I don't know where the UFC is leaning towards in terms of who they would like to get the title more, you know, who they feel they can market more. Hey, Marketing wise, is it Megan Anderson. Megan. Yeah, I think she's a prettier girl. She she could talk better English than than Cyborg. Mm -hmm. Megan Anderson's brash. I mean, the, the UFC likes. Yeah, she's somewhat cocky. I think and I think she's younger. Yeah, and I, I think looks. I don't know if looks carry as much weight as Cyborg's um, fighting reputation and mm -hmm. her fighting style and her overall, you know, intimidating look. This this might almost be a 50-50, I think, where they're just like, okay, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I don't think they pretty much talk into the fact that Megan Anderson has much of a chance of winning the fight. But so I think they're pretty they're they're assuming that Cyborg's is gonna you know she's gonna take the belt yeah. that they pretty much designed for her. So. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it, it. I don't know where Jermaine goes from here. I mean, what, do you, what, does she, what does she do from here? I don't know, but a lot of... That's like the worst thing you go through yeah. as a fighter. Like, what? I mean, a lot of fans and the promoter in the brass, the UFC brass, don't really respect her anymore. Just the way no. that she, she, how she handled the whole situation. I don't know. I'm top 15, maybe. Even though she's a champ at 145, but that fight against Holly Holm was a very questionable win. She's probably going to fight at 135. I mean, but... I mean, how do you market... I don't know. Well, I mean, you can market her, but, like, I mean, I don't know what kind she's of... A cow she's a coward in a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, because, she, one, she didn't want to fight, and then, two, she was stripped of the title because she didn't want to fight. I mean, it it just doesn't get any worse for, like, a, the reputation of a fighter. She's probably... She's practically begging the UFC to take the title away from her. Yeah. Her. Yeah, so, I mean, if they put her out in, in, into another fight, I can see them... Throwing her out there against another top contender, maybe at 135, and then seeing what happens if she, you know, she could belt herself back back up. But right. it's gonna be interesting in terms of getting her another fight. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where she goes from here. I don't know. I mean, it's almost like it reminds me of like remember Caleb Starnes way back when mm -hmm. he was like running around the ring and didn't he, he like pretty much refused to fight. I, I think that. um, what's his name? He lost me a fighter, right? I think it was on Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, he was on the Ultimate Fighter. But it was um, Nate Corey. I think he was fighting mm -hmm. Nate Corey. And then he was like, he was avoiding Nate Corey pretty much the entire fight, kind of circling around. And then he never recovered. His reputation never really recovered. Mm -hmm. I think he had a couple of fights after that. Um, I don't know if I would put it in the same category as this. I think it's, I think it's worse with Jermaine. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Like a disgraced champion, you know? Like, where do you go from there? Um. But, I mean, all that aside, I'm looking forward to it. 214 is going to be here in uh, Anaheim. Mm -hmm. That's going to be cool. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be an interesting fight, and I'm looking forward to that whole event. Yeah, me too. Especially all the, all the lead-up. It's going to be exciting. Insane. Um, let's get to our first guest. Yeah. So our first guest is Steve uh, Cazola. He's a Bellator lightweight. Um, and get to know Steve Cazola, man, because this guy's pretty interesting. So here you go. Steve Cazola. Steve Cazola, thank you for being on the show. Uh, glad to have you here, uh, Bellator Lightweight. I mean, you came off an awesome victory this past March. Um, I mean, how are you feeling, man? Are you, I know you're in a training right now. You just got done with training. But um, what, what have you been up to this past couple of months? Man, well, I came out of that last fight 100%, yeah. obviously, with it being uh, 28 seconds. Yeah. Um, it was good. The body was healthy going into it. body was healthy coming out of it. So you can't get much uh, better scenario than that. You don't get paid by the minute. So... In and out, no injuries, no problems. Mm -hmm. um, in the gym, been in the gym since that last fight, so no time off uh, was needed. And uh, just preparing for the next one, man. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, I know that um, there have been talks of not, guys not wanting to fight you because I guess they're, like, they're, they're scared of your hands or whatever. <laughs> um, has Valachar booked you a fight um, in, the, yes. in the recent weeks? Oh, oh really? Well, um, we don't have a contract signed or anything like that, so I can't make it a, an official announcement. Okay. Okay. But we do have an opponent, and we do have a date. We do have a location, so uh, it's coming this fall. And uh, it's going to be another great fight. I'm fighting another undefeated fighter. And uh, you're just going to, you know, again, just uh, see me go in there prepared wow. on all aspects, mentally, physically, spiritually, coming yeah. on point, make weight like a professional, 
show up on time like a professional, finish the fight like a professional. Yeah. When, when did uh, Bellator approach you about your next fight? Was it just recently? Uh, yeah. It was, I just got uh, – I had the – the date uh like a week ago and then we just got uh the opponent's name so but again no contracts aren't signed or anything yeah, like that yeah. and so Bellator has to make uh, the announcement the and everything like that but super excited to just have a name and have a place you know mm-hmm. um, i wanted a quick turnaround uh you know with my 28 second performance mm-hmm. on uh, march 31st at bellator 175 um I wanted to go to London or I wanted to be on the New York card, but you know, I, I totally understand that there's just a lot of fighters on the roster. There's only so many shows per year that Bellator can put on. They have a budget. They had to get their names and their guys in. So I completely understand. I'm just glad that I got one booked out uh, pretty you know, good in advance. And I'm just looking forward to it, man. Just waiting to uh, get back in there and just keep showing my constant uh, improvement and uh, just evolving. And yeah. uh, I can't wait. I added some more pieces to uh, the puzzle. I'm uh, up here in uh, Huntington beach, uh, Huntington beach ultimate training center. Uh, my manager, uh, Tiki, has gotten uh, a lot more involved with my training. I just got another addition to uh, my wrestling with a wrestling coach, Coach Paul. And then just keeping with the same guys at Team Quest, uh, Oceanside Jiu-Jitsu. Manny Torres is my boxing coach in Carlsbad. So, man, like, uh, as soon as I think it can't get any better, it's just getting better in terms of how my life has been improving. Um, the training has been improving. The, the periodization, the scheduling, it's just all been getting better, man. And uh, I'm super blessed and super thankful uh, for all this. Nice. And do you have an idea of when Bellator is make that announcement for your next fight? Um, I mean, they got a lot going on with uh, the New York card. Yeah, this weekend. Up day, mm-hmm. And then uh, they got, you know, there's still like a couple cards after that. So um, it, I, 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 I anticipate they won't announce it for okay. yeah. probably another month or two months, okay. you know, or so. But hey, man, as soon as as soon as they announce it, then I'm gonna announce it all over the world. <laughs> so, uh, I, <laughs> I can't wait, dude. I mean, I, I you know, you, you always. You, as a fighter, you want to get people, you know, no, let them know right away. But I mean, you know how it is in the sport, man. Mm-hmm. People could get hurt. You know, situations could happen with the venue and the promotion and stuff like that. So you don't want to count their chickens before they hatch. But right. yeah. definitely excited to have the opponent, have a name, have a date, um, have a location, and uh, it's going to be phenomenal, man. Yeah, I know the past couple of years have been kind of like stagnant a little bit for you. You had like one fight last year. You had two fights in okay. 2015. You had one fight this year so far. Um, yep. I mean, I know a big struggle is the fact that you're hard fighting guys to fight you. I mean, you know what I mean? So, like, uh, mm-hmm. the fact that you have another fight booked this morning, how, like, uh, this, uh, you know, coming up, and how, how, how good does that feel? You know what I mean? To, like, know that you can at least get two fights in this year, you know, if not more, hopefully one before the end of the year. Do you think it's going to be your next fight going to be later in the year, or is it going to be early fall? Later fall? Early fall? Oh, it's probably going to be like mid to early fall. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, again, I, I hope uh, I hope to fight as often as possible, man. Yeah. If, I, if I keep getting out of these fights uninjured, uh, you know, thankfully, and everything keeps going well, I want to. I'm, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm always staying in shape, and I'm always ready to go. But for for me as a family man, as a husband, as a father, it's always great to know that I have something already booked and planned. It's the unknown that kind of gets you uh, uncomfortable mm-hmm. and scared in terms of not knowing when your next fighter is going to be, when you're going to get that next uh, paycheck and everything like that um so as those those years that you brought up that you mentioned you know it was a lot of inconsistent uh, inconsistency and instability um on a lot of areas and it's it's hard it's it's hard to make it and it's hard to uh stay in there but i truly believe that i'm meant to do this i truly yeah. believe i'm meant to be uh one of the best in the world i truly believe i'm meant to be a champion so i just stuck with it and thankfully for my amazing family my wife my son and all their constant support um, you don't get you don't get through this alone, man. Uh, there's there's no way I, I wouldn't be where I'm at without all this amazing help I've got. So just very blessed, very fortunate, and so thankful that I got something set up and just progressing towards it, just one step at a time. Yeah. Now this weekend is you know Bowser's is making its uh, its pay per view run in, you know here in, in New York City, and then also guys from the UFC are jumping ship to to Bellator. I think right now Bellator is in a, has a pretty big uh, momentum coming in 2017. Are uh, your thoughts on Bellator and um, it's exciting knowing that all these guys from the UFC are coming uh, down to Bellator and maybe have a matchup with you at some point. Dude, it's, it's awesome. I think Bellator is making yeah. some amazing moves right now with yeah. the pay-per-views coming, going to Madison Square Garden, signing big names like Phil Davis, Ryan Bader, um, you know. Uh, Robert John got- yeah, I mean Lima, uh, Roy McDonald. I mean, we're just sign- they're just signing guys left and right, which is just making uh, some noise and more splash mm-hmm. sport. That's good. I think Bellator need, like – uh, Bellator's doing a great job, and the UFC needs some good competition too. Right. Like, I think it's just enhance everyone. And Bellator, you see, they're perfecting their craft, man. They're just getting, they're putting on great shows, they're signing good names, and 
Uh, I think they're doing a lot better build up for this uh, pay per view with the countdown show and everything like that. Yeah. Getting a little bit more behind the scenes stuff. But I think is huge. You need to create an emotional attachment to the fighters, yeah. which UFC does really well. They do, you know, the embeddeds, they do the countdowns and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what gets fans really emotionally invested in the fighter, which gives them emotionally invested in the the fight in the card. And now that Bellator is starting to do that, watch, you know, the fans are going to grow and, you know, keep putting on legit, exciting fights and matchups and, it, it will just keep on expanding. I'm, I'm excited, man. I think I'm back in Bellator at the, the right time. And, um, you know, the, the pay is good, too. Like, there's not, like, a big difference yeah. between, uh, you know, between Bellator and UFC as far as the pay structure, too. And on top of that, we get to have our own sponsors. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's you know, a big that's deal. Huge. So yeah. I, can, I can have all my own sponsors who can pay me whatever. Like, that's, that's that, awesome. that, you know, what they're paying me is not Bellator's, you know, that's not their business or their problem. You know, whereas with UFC, that's that's a huge thing with Reebok and everything like that. So that creates a lot of animosity mm-hmm. with yeah. a lot of guys, you know. So uh, I'm happy to be where I'm at. And for the fans uh, who don't really know your background too much, uh, give them an, a, an, like, an idea of how you got into the sport um, and then how you became the, the undefeated you know, fighter, that you, fighter that you are today. You know? <laughs> well, my first uh, introduction to martial arts was when I was younger. I started doing Taekwondo when I was seven years old. My mom wanted me to get some a little bit more discipline and structure, help me build some confidence. So I started doing traditional martial arts, Taekwondo, yeah. and did tournaments um, sparring, board breaking forms, all the traditional stuff and stuff like that, and ended up earning my black belt in that just before my 12th birthday. Um, not too many things that you do take from Taekwondo as far as like what's applicable from Taekwondo to MMA, except yeah. being comfortable with throwing kicks, you know, some spinning attacks, um, good dynamic movement, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, after that, I wanted to get more into more traditional sports. So I started playing uh, football and running track. Mm-hmm. Those were my two sports in high school. And then actually uh, uh, got recruited and played one year of Division Three football in my hometown of uh, Naperville, Illinois, at this school called North Central College. And I uh, was playing wide receiver for them, but I just kind of fell out of love with the sport. And uh, I ended up actually transferring from uh, North Central College to Northern Illinois University. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to play football at the Division One level. That wasn't going to happen. I was not big enough at <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah. And I was man, but I'm still a competitor. What, what can I do? And the UFC was up and coming at the time. So I was like, you know, let me try my hand at mixed martial arts. But, you know, Midwest, man, there's not a lot of good, especially, you know, this time. This is uh, almost, you know, this is nine, you know, eight, nine years ago. Yeah. There just wasn't, just wasn't that many gyms, especially in that area. But I ended up finding a guy named Sean Jackson who was just renting some space out at a like a local karate taekwondo gym, and uh, we had four guys, and that's where I did my amateur career was in college, and nice. did did four amateur fights, um, and all in Illinois during my col- you know when I was in college went three and one, and once I graduated from Northern Illinois with a degree in uh, kinesiology, I did my internship in Las Vegas and trained at the Throwdown Gym. And during that time, my coach moved from Illinois to Southern California. And when he moved there, he's like, guys, the training out here is great. Just come and check it out. So I mm-hmm. drove from Las Vegas down to uh, Southern California and uh, just checked out some training there as well. And uh, you could just see and feel the difference from, I mean, the training on the West Coast versus yeah. the training in the Midwest was just night and day. So I was like, if I'm going to do this, I got to find a way to make it out here. So long story short, I uh, end up just after I got done with my internship in Las Vegas, I, a couple months later, I just packed up my stuff and just got on a plane and moved to California. I was working at a machine shop, which I don't know shit about manufacturing <laughs> or any of that. Yeah. It's, just what I had to, it's just what I had to do to survive. Yeah. You know, when you have that big dream, you're not just going to hop into your dream right away on most circumstances. You know, I had, I had to start at the bottom. So I was sleeping on a couch trying to take public transportation out here, which if you don't, I mean, you guys know how it is. In yeah. West Coast, yeah. Uh, which is terrible uh-huh. i mean um it was it was hard it was a really rough come up and uh you know um turned pro in july of 2013 and you know got a uh, submission went there and just kind of just kind of kept the ball rolling i just i did what i had to do to survive and then every other second was dedicated to training and improving and uh you make a lot of mistakes along your way you you know g- get some awesome relationships and you you know lose relationships um ups and downs, money coming in, money, no, no money coming in. Um, just, uh, a crazy road, man. But, um, overall, I just got to say that, uh, I, I, I had to get to the spot, which was in, which was for me, the West coast, which was for me, Southern California. And, you know, one thing just led to another in terms of meeting the right people, get, you know, surrounding yourself with just a good championship environment of good fighters, good coaches, 
uh, good training partners, good people. And if you stay focused and stay on task and take away all the BS, man, eventually your dreams are going to chase you. You don't have to chase your dreams as long as you just work hard enough. So, yeah. you know, to all you young, you know, young guys out there, future fighters who are struggling, like, I, I, trust me, I've been there. I know. But you will find a way. If it's important to you, you will find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. So, you know, bite down get you know get grinding make those sacrifices needed and you'll be surprised that the right people the right opportunities come into your life at the exact right time you know but just stay on point stay prepared because when the opportunity comes it's too late to be prepared you got to be prepared for that moment always right off the bat and so that for me was my last fight i mean i was just staying ready waiting for a fight then all of a sudden i met tiki he became my manager um, I was like, hey, got you a great contract with Bellator again, and we got this fight. You ready? I'm like, born ready. Let's do nice, this. Nice. Uh, how did you get involved with Tiki, though? Like, where did you meet him? Well, he- um, I was working at the UFC gym mm-hmm. uh, a little bit before, and uh, when I was up in Huntington Beach doing uh, a trainer certification, I met Razor Rob McCollum, mm, okay. and uh, him and Tiki are great friends. So uh, he uh, he put me in touch with Tiki, and I ended up reaching out to him a little bit later, and uh, came out to Huntington Beach again and had a great meeting with him and asked him what what uh, what would you you know what do you think about being my manager do you think it'd be a good fit for you and I um, where would you like to see my career go and we were just hitting on all fronts and he's a great dude he's got great experience yeah. and uh, he works with a lot of big names and yeah. you know he's a pioneer of the sport so we clicked right away he's a good man good man of integrity and uh, I trusted him and he followed through on his word and got me a great contract and not only did he do that for me. Um, he recognized my gifts as a, a coach and as a trainer and hired me on as a, his fitness manager at Huntington Beach Ultimate Training Center. So oh, now, wow. I have a full-time, now I have a full-time job here as well as training. And I got my team in Temecula with Team Quest as well, my coach, many tournaments, boxing, Oceanside Jiu-Jitsu. So, man, just an amazing championship yeah. environment. And it's hitting on all fronts. That's, That's nice. really cool, man. Cool, man. Well, we're about what, six months into June, almost half the year has gone by. What are some of your goals for 2017? before the idea is gone you know i i will i mean obviously i got my uh my fight that i have lined up lined up and i want to would love to get one more before the end of the year i I, ideally i want to be fighting three to four times a year Mm -hmm. but even if it doesn't happen even if it's just two fights that is okay i want to keep moving up the ladder man just one fight at a time and earn my way to uh you know big fights uh big you know big contracts and eventually the title you know it, for me it's about being a good provider for my mm. wife and my son yeah um that's that's always going to be number one and number one is uh, my wife and my son and providing for them so as long as i'm able to take care and feed my family and do what i love to do man like th- this is it man living the dream awesome yeah. um is there anybody else in the division of n- not naming the opponent that you have next that you have your eye on that you want to yeah, there's against. a couple guys. I mean, obviously, uh, obviously, I called out Dylan Dennis in my yeah. last fight, mm-hmm. and uh, he is silent. He is completely, <laughs> utterly silent. So yeah. his whole BS of I'm not scared of anyone, I'm this, I'm on that, it, it is just BS. So yeah. I don't know if he's a publicity stunt. I don't know if he's even going to really fight. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this dude. Because he's signed, I right? Know. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, and I'm honestly, like, who cares? Like, yeah. I mean – He's just one of those guys that everyone loves to hate, you know, and he's and he's fake and I called him out on it. And uh, he, he knows what he's doing is illegitimate and he's just trying to play that bad guy role so he can, you know, just cut, you know, cut, cut the line and yeah. work his way to, you know, money and big fights, which, okay, but when you're in there and you're looking across the cage, you got a legitimate guy who's put his time in and, and uh, he's not a, you know, we're not singular fighters anymore. You're not going to come up with just one discipline i mean i respect that dylan dennis is a phenomenal black belt you know under marcel mm-hmm. garcia not taking that away from him i'm just saying even with that credential that does not just cut you in line to the top of bellator mm-hmm. no yeah. way yeah. you got any guy who's well-rounded will you know sprawl and brawl and knock his ass out and uh you know we'll, we'll see I, I i think bellator and him are going to try to make their money with you know get him some you know white guys and you know he'll probably just end up you know going in hugging them, tripping them, taking them down and applying a submission of some sort for a couple of times, but it's not going to last too long Yeah, in all honesty. But another person who I wanted to fight was uh, Adam Piccolotti. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well that makes a lot of sense, right? He's 9-0. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. he's, uh, I think he's got five fights in Bellator, I believe. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like three finishes, I think, and something like that. But he's like, oh, like Steve, Steve Cazola doesn't deserve to fight me. I'm like, what the hell do you mean <laughs> I don't deserve to fight you? You're 9-0, I'm 8-0. Yeah, you know, I have three wins in Bellator plus a win with World Series of Fighting. I fight in the main card, you fight in the main card. So I don't know what you mean that 
I don't deserve to fight you. So yeah. that made no sense. I, get, I think he's just kind of, again, I think he's intimidated. Who wants to get knocked out? Yeah. No one. No, no one. one. <laughs> no one. <laughs> no one. Like, it's, I mean, it's one thing to get decisioned. It's one thing to get submitted. To get knocked out really, I think, resonates and sits with you for a lot longer. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't blame him for not wanting to fight me. Um, you know, I, I, his time, him and I will have to fight sooner or later. So um, that's another guy who I have on my radar as well. So um, between Dylan Dennis and Piccolotti, I think those are two guys I would I would love to fight in the near future. But I, I doubt that they'll accept it. Yeah. You know, speaking of big money fights, um, Mayweather versus uh, Conor got announced. Uh, your thoughts on the fight, and, and do you think that Conor has a chance of winning this fight? Well, um, uh, I, I don't think Conor has a chance. Yeah. To me. This is what I've always said. Boxers, don't come into the cage because we will whoop you. Yeah. And on vice versa, MMA fighters, don't go into the ring because they'll whoop us. I mean, you have to realize that all the time that we've put into any type of grappling, kicking, Jiu-jitsu, they're all been just perfecting the singular discipline of boxing, which is an amazing specialty art. And the angles, the footing, uh, distance, positioning, it's all different. And Floyd Mayweather has mastered it. I mean, he, yes, he is older, but he's been doing it longer. And he comes from an amazing lineage of, of, a, of a boxing family in mm-hmm. the Mayweathers. I mean, that whole family has been boxing and perfecting for years and generations. So this is not a fight that's going to be good for McGregor. I mean, he's going to make big money, which is good. Um, I think if he goes out there and has just a decent showing, it's going to be a win for him. He does have a puncher's chance being a southpaw, being the bigger guy, but it's just so minimal that I don't think it's just going to be that impact. I mean, yes, there's a puncher's yeah. chance that you have an MMA, but in this in this type of rules and style matchup, I mean, it's I, for me, it's a point zero zero one percent that he's able to land a yeah. shot that you know is able to take Floyd out. To be yeah. honest, I think I think Floyd's going to do. You know, he's a smart fighter too. As much he is a cocky, you know all about money type of dude. Uh, he's very smart. He's a very intelligent fighter. So I see him managing distance very well, being able to stick and move on Connor. And I think he ends up putting him away probably in the later rounds, probably around round uh, seven or eight. Mm. I think he'll end early then. Huh? Yeah, I, I don't, I, you know what? And there's also a different pace and different yeah. tempo and conditioning mm. for boxing than it is MMA. MMA, there's a little bit more rest points with, you know, you know, with the takedowns and the grappling situations, there's just more periods where you can rest. Whereas with boxing, it's like, you know, three minutes, high pace, fast twitch, you know, back and forth, a lot of mm-hmm. upper body movement and everything like that. You know, Connor's a, a fantastic MMA striker, but you have to realize he's an MMA strike, a, a fantastic MMA striker when you put in the aspects and the pieces of there's kicks involved, there's elbows, there's knees, there's takedowns. When you don't have those options anymore and there's just hands, how good of a striker is he? We don't know, and we're going to find out, but I don't think he's good enough to take on, uh, you know, Money Mayweather in That's boxing. True. Yeah, oh, good points. Good points, man. Um, thank you for being on the show. I mean, it's great Dude, having you. Yeah. You're uh, obviously very insightful on a lot of things, and just in terms of your career, we we loved your career so far at this point, and look forward to your next fight coming up. Hopefully, we get to talk to you around that time when it's a you know the fight, your fight week, and all that stuff. So that'd be cool. Um, Absolutely. Maybe if you can uh, let the fans know where they can find you on social media and some of your sponsors, if you want to plug them. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Well, th- first of all, guys, thank you so much for having me on our show. It's yeah. a pleasure. You guys are awesome dudes. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Um, you can find me on social mo- uh, media, Steve Cazola MMA, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, on Facebook, Steve Thunderbeast Cazola. Uh, my sponsors, Clinch Gear, they're um, amazing people, quality environment, Purist Labs, SoCal Fresh Prep. I mean, with th- without the help of my sponsors, this all this stuff doesn't happen. I mean, helping mm-hmm. me to pay for training, helping me with my meals, my supplements, all these things. Um, their their help is just uh, phenomenal. And thank you to my team, you know, my coaches, my team up in Huntington Beach, Hun- Huntington Beach Ultimate Training Center, my manager Tiki, my guys in uh, Team Quest in Temecula, Dan Henderson's gym, uh, Oceanside Jiu Jitsu, Manny Torres Boxing. I mean, between like my team and my coaches. They're, they're the ones that, you know, really make this possible and uh, make me who I am, the fighter. So it's not me. I just I just come in, do the work. They're the, they're the masterminds behind everything. So uh, it's amazing. And also, you know, thank you to my wife for being the amazing sh- woman she is and, you know, my son, Bradley. You know, I want nothing more in my, you know, in my life than to be this man, you know, this little boy's hero. Yeah. So, uh, Have a belated Father's Day, too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just trying to be my son's uh, biggest hero and – uh, it's awesome, man. I'm super blessed, super thankful for all this platform and these opportunities. So thank you guys so much for having yeah. me. I will, as soon as I can announce it, 
you guys will be one of the first to know for sure. We'll come on. We'll talk about it. Uh, how many awesome. people got to do that? Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Like, like your story is great and, and very inspirational. So, uh, Josh and I are looking forward to seeing your fight in, in the fall. And, and until then, best of luck in training and best of luck in your fight as well. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. God all bless. Right. And I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Yeah, Take right. care. Have a good day. Take care. All right, brother. Bye. 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 And that was Steve Cazola, Bellator lightweight. Thank you, thank you to Steve for being on the show. Good guy, man. Good guy. Uh, next up, man, uh, the big news over the week, obviously, is a Conor Mayweather uh, fight is officially confirmed. We we put out our last episode. It was pretty much the same day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about the rumors of it actually being confirmed. There were rumors out there that it was going to be announced soon and shortly. You know, later, yeah, later, later that day, later that day, it pretty much got confirmed. Yeah, and well, it was about an hour later. I think I remember. You surprised? Surprised that it's going to happen? Uh, I'm not surprised, just because of the interest from media yeah. and fans around, and the, and the the amount of money that is going to go into this fight. I think, of money. I, I think it's not. It's, I, I think it's something to be ignored. Um, but I am surprised it got done so fast. I didn't think it was going to be done so quickly. That and and we don't even have to wait that long. It's in August. It's like mid August. Yeah, two months late away. Late August, something like that. It's two months away. And they have that Canelo fight, Canelo and Tri- Triple G. Yeah, a couple of weeks later. I think it's gonna hurt that. Yeah, that one's that gonna fight. suffer. No one's gonna. I mean, you're gonna have to pay almost a hundred bucks, if not more, more for this fight. Um, yeah, it's definitely gonna hurt the Canelo and Triple G fight for sure on pay per view guys, because it's like a week later, two weeks later maybe. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but I mean. I, I don't think it has sunken in me as far as like no. fi- I mean realizing or just to see Connor or you know our guy or mixed martial arts going mm-hmm. against Mayweather. It's it's unheard of. It's crazy. It's, yeah, it blows my mind still. Yeah, when I think about it. And then um, I mean all, all the talk right now. Everybody's like weighing in, putting in their opinions. Not a lot of people giving Connor, you know much of a chance out there especially the boxing guys i mean i mean especially it's the understandable older, especially the older sports sports commentators are not giving I, him and, a I, chance and i hope I, I hope when connor wins oh i can't wait to see you <laughs> I, wins can't wait. <laughs> I, I was boxing purist and i mean yeah. the safe bet is made with i mean he's 49 and 0 for a yeah. reason he's yeah, and, and it's all it's all by his rules it's boxing rules 10 ounce gloves i mean yeah it's, yeah it's if it was a mixed martial arts fight, then yeah, obviously oh, it would be first round knockout. Yeah, I mean you could you could probably even say nine nine and a half times out of ten, it's probably going to be McGregor winning that fight just because of the rules. And obviously, an MMA fight or any fight is a puncher's chance, so Mayweather has got the the opportunity there. But yeah, and, and the other way, it's the same with the other way around. And then if you look at anybody that's ever gone into another sport, any another combat sport, mm-hmm. it's very rarely does it turn out well. You know, like. Yeah. Or it's mixed. It's mixed. But you have boxers that have come into MMA throughout the years that have gotten demolished. I mean, last one that off the top of my head that I can remember is James, James Tony. Tony, obviously the biggest name out there that's gone over. Um, but but I think in this situation is I mean, I think with an MMA guy going to the boxing world it's different just because yeah. they train boxing every day. Boxing is an element of mixed martial arts, so Connor t- trains boxing almost every day. Yeah. Whereas a boxer coming in, he has to learn jujitsu. He has to learn kicks, wrestling. Mm. With McGregor, he has he knows all that stuff already. So yeah. all he has to do is focus on boxing. Yeah. It's not like he has to learn a whole new you know regimen of of, of a martial art again. Yeah. So it's different when it, when an MMA guy goes to a box, boxing. Yeah, ring. it's different when an MMA guy goes to a different trained. a different combat sport because yeah. they're already kind of familiar with it. So it's kind of just. You're fighting against a guy who's or a girl who's a little bit more. I mean, that's what they do. Experience. That's all they've done. Yeah, it's just experience. Like, like Cyborg lost a kickboxing fight, but she lost to I think Joanne Bars, who was like you know a top champion over there and went the distance, lost the decision, but went the distance. Yeah. So, you know, but but she held her own in some ways, and you know it's different. Yeah, it's different when a, like a, a striker. From another sport, a grappler from another sport, it goes into MMA. It, it's because there's so much more that they have to think about. Take down the kicks. Even, and... even a grappler, or like a wrestler, could get by with a, maybe one or a couple of fights. You know, just sit, lay and pray on somebody. Mm-hmm. But eventually, they're going to get caught. 
eventually it just it's gonna be exposed to, gonna be to, exposed. Like, to like a top five yeah, fighter you can't last that long uh jujitsu guys too you know i mean it, it, a lot of times if they come straight from jujitsu it you know they might be able, they may be able to hold on for a little while but you know depends on how well they transfer it over right anybody that does uh gokan saki who's kickboxer coming into the ufc i'm, I'm waiting to see how that's going to turn out it's later this year yeah but uh this fight yeah it's it's mayweather's rules mayweather's arena mayweather's all that stuff so it's going to be interesting to see if connor everybody's saying that you know connor's not even going to touch him and that's you know, that's absurd i don't know, I don't know. And, uh, no connor's gonna connor's gonna land something um the, the worst case for connor is if he gets stopped early which that won't happen which that won't happen i mean that's a, that's a, the more likely scenario is that he loses the decision or he even if he gets stopped it would be later on in the fight and it would mostly be due to like exhaustion i think i mean but this fight let's be honest is is set up to be a bore because both guys are counter punchers yeah and mirror is going to be attacking connor yeah so i think it's going to be i think the first two rounds might be interesting in the, the next i wonder 10. how connor is going to come out though like stance wise is, is he, he going to come out like how he normally does or yeah. he's like I don't, I, I, I don't know. I, I just think the first two rounds would be interesting, and then the next 10 rounds are going to be boring. It's going to yeah. be dancing around for 12 rounds or 10 rounds. I think it's going to be a very boring fight. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess they bet is me whether, but I'm, I'm gunning for Conor. I can't, I, I'm, I'm never going to doubt Conor McGregor ever again. Yeah, so. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gunning for Conor. Hopefully, hopefully he wins. Um, I think he's got a chance. You know, it's it's... It, it'll be one thing if he never trained boxing, but it's no. He's a he's a. The only thing that worries me about Conor is his conditioning. Is his conditioning because you see him gas out when he when he's out, when he strikes, and then it's gonna be twelve rounds of just striking. So it it, could, it takes a lot on on his cardio, and mm -hmm. we've seen Conor fade out. Then it's it's three three minute twelve uh, twelve rounds, three minutes each. I mean, it, it, there's a chance that he can get tired at some point because I mean, I, I think anybody, yeah, yeah, and he, he's already he he tends to fade in MMA fights at some point, and this is a heavier weight. It'll be at one what one fifty four. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I don't and, know. And I don't know. And then ten ounce glove takes away a lot of his power. Yeah, the ten ounce glove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but who knows? I mean, this whole fight is around one is is around one question is who knows it's it's gonna happen who who who's made them uh like the stupidest prediction a sports analyst have you seen a much a lot of them out there oh i've seen one that said that connor wouldn't even touch him that, I, didn't, I didn't i didn't that's the stupidest one i don't remember who it was though um this is one this is one show i think it's where is it colin hurd and then that that the black guy? The black guy, the fat guy? Oh, I hate that guy. Dude, that guy is so I don't know if you know his name. Is this somebody with a hat? What's it what's his what's his name? Do you know his name? No, I don't. No? I don't know his name. The, the dumbest uh, he's the worst. I didn't uh, he's so like like old school, stupid and ignorant and He's the epitome of a casual fan. And like just <laughs> I, I I don't even know his name really, but I mean people who watch sports probably know who who he is but he he, he his points are like ugh. like he made one about this fight everybody's talking about you know skill for skill mm -hmm. you know there's about three other two other guys that were on the panel they're all talking about like skill for skill how is it going to match up who's going to who is going to have the advantage this and that this guy the 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 fat guy um decides to make it about race saying that this fight wouldn't have happened if connor wasn't white and this and i'm like and he's what? like he's like he's like sorry to throw this in there but could we could we, is this is this fight actually gonna happen if it, if connor wasn't white this is a straight uh race war type of like I, I can't i can't stand when people bring race into swimming into sports it's so stupid man I, is I, it stewart no no is it stewart I'll look it up right now, but yeah, no, it was uh, it's just such a dumb point. It was unnecessary, um, and it was probably one of the, the the dumbest things I've heard anybody say over the past, since the uh, the fight was announced. Um, let's see. Stuff. 
Oh, that's what it is. Is it Cornwall? No. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying? Anybody else say anything stupid that you heard? Uh, just that, that that comment about Connor not being able to, being able to uh, touch him, touch yeah. Mayweather. But, yeah, the whole race thing is, is absurd because Mayweather's black, so. Have you heard it? Have you heard anybody else say anything that, that, uh, there he is. Jason Whitlock. Is it Jason Whitlock? Yeah, I think it's Jason Whitlock. Yeah, yeah, it's Jason Whitlock. Fucking stupidest guy on sports commentating. Like, <laughs> such a dumbass, man. Like, I, I just hear, every time I hear that guy make a comment about anything, especially when it comes to, like, mixed MMA. martial arts or whatever, yeah. he's so clueless. And so obviously biased towards uh, whatever boxing knowledge he has, and and that's it. Like he looks at MMA as like, just, I mean, it's just stupid. I think when was it? I think it was. Uh, it might have been a McGregor fight. It's the only time I really ever hear him say anything. And like maybe uh, Diaz fight, one of the I think their second one. Um, he was talking about like how because it, it was a stand up war that if if. UFC puts on more fights like this, they'll be. Oh, yeah, I remember. Big. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, it's just so. It's like. I remember. I remember. I, I was hearing that. It's like, and then the the whole race comment. It, it's so unnecessary. No one was even thinking about it being a like a a, a fight. It was even a thing. Yeah, based on race, he wasn't. He was trying to make it a thing, and then, like he makes comments like that all the time. But overall, I'm I'm really excited about the the tour that they have lined up because oh, they're, they're yeah, going to do a multiple that, yeah. city tour. I mean, even Ireland, I think is a possible location for it should, it should, right? Yeah, it should. Um, but I mean, the, I think the trash talk is going to be so epic. The tour is going to be epic. The trailer, hopefully like, hopefully, um, like they make a trailer like they did with a uh, Jose Aldo and mm -hmm. McGregor the first time around. Mm -hmm. That was so epic right there. Um, mm -hmm. and they make one for this fight, but it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's at the T-Mobile Arena, August 26th. And I think the pay-per-view is going to be at least around 100 bucks, probably for standard, not even HD. And then, or maybe like probably 70 for for standard and then 100 mm -hmm. for HD. I don't, I don't know maybe, hopefully. I don't know how it works. But um, yeah, looking forward to it. That's, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, I mean, so I, much I, shit. I'm, I'm looking forward to I mean, because I only... Mayweather knows what's coming to him, but I guess for his verbal assault that Connor's going to give him. It's going it's to be bad, man. It's going to be <laughs> bad. But, I mean, I expected a lot of the the, the people to, to clown on McGregor and clown on this fight. It, it's, you know. I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's a spectacle, and that's, that's sad. Yeah, yeah. But people call him that he's, he's got no chance, and, I mean. It's a fight. But I think people understand now, more than ever, that if it was the other way around, that Mayweather wouldn't really stand a chance. I yeah, there wouldn't be there wouldn't be the question of who knows. It would, yeah. it would be defined. So he's I think get his ass I think I think MMA has gained that that much respect to where I think people understand that this is a limited fight. That this is obviously favoring Mayweather. Uh, you know, this the chances of McGregor beating a guy who's so dominant in his sport that it's you know. His chances are very limited, so it's. But then I heard the argument of like people, are, this boxing purists out there, they're they're calling him made like a, you know, no rules combat. No, this is all the guys that are still lingering around and people that are biased towards boxing, which, yeah. which everybody knows. If you, you put the boxer in MMA fight, you put the kickboxer in MMA fight, you put anybody that comes from one discipline in a in a in a real mixed martial arts fight where they have to defend themselves at all costs against a person who can beat them in any way possible shape or form they're going to lose yeah. 9 times out of 10 yeah. you know so it's it's it's, a, it's people know that already and I think, I'm kind of glad to see that a lot of people still show the MMA that respect because they know true. this fight is uh, it's it's in Mayweather's it's court favor yeah for sure yeah. Um, just uh, also to touch on some some news that was kind of uh, 
kind of uh, what I don't know what you want to call it. Unfortunate, tragic, unfortunate. Tragic, yeah. um, you have Tim Haig, a former UFC heavyweight, um, you know MMA veteran. He's been around for a long time. Um, had a couple of boxing fights, I believe, or this might have been his first pro boxing fight, and it did not go well. Um, unfortunately, Tim Haig suffered some injuries that resulted in him having brain damage and left in a coma and later on passed away recently. I think it was yesterday mm-hmm. or the day before. So unfortunately, uh, MMA community lost a, a, you know, a well-known fighter. And, you know, and obviously they, he got seriously injured in a boxing fight, mm. you know, which not MMA, yeah, not That's MMA, cool. where people like to say that MMA is barbaric and MMA is, you know, people get hurt and made there's blood everywhere. And, you know, it's far more dangerous. Not not so much like the key. He goes to a boxing fight and obviously had poor refereeing and gets hurt so bad that that he ends up dying from his injuries. Yeah. So it's like, there you go. The show, it goes to show you how dangerous well, you boxing get, is. Yeah, you get punched in the, in the face for 12 rounds. Yeah. And if you're rocked, you get stood up. And if you're at, at least can, you know, stand on your feet, you'll continue and take more punishment. So it just goes to show you that, you know, all the, all the argument that boxing's uh, not as dangerous as MMA is BS. Is BS. So unfortunately, uh, the MMA community lost another uh, individual in Tim Haig. Um, and also in other, I guess, tragic news or unfortunate news is you have a UFC veteran, welterweight veteran, um, Matt Hughes mm-hmm. suffered a, a car accident where as of right now, he's still, I think, in a coma. Mm-hmm. And I think he, he was trained, right? Yeah, he was somewhat responsive. Um, there was, a, a, you know, he was in his truck, I guess, near his home. It got struck by an, a moving train while crossing the tracks. I really don't know. I don't know if he was trying to beat the train and it just clipped his truck and sent him flying. I, I really don't know. Um, I haven't looked into it, but they, he was airlifted to a medical center, and then he's been in treatment ever since, and he's been in, in there for the past week. Um, no, no updates in terms of his condition. I think he's in stable condition as far as uh, what I'm hearing, but I think he's still in, in, in medically induced coma and was suffering from head trauma and probably some other injuries. But you know, wish Matt Hughes all the best. I, when I saw that, I was like, oh god, hopefully. I mean. Yeah. That'll suck to have yeah. to lose Matt Hughes, but he seems to be okay as of right now, um, at least in stable condition. So hopefully he pulls through. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, you know, just to close out the show, we have uh, five picks. There's a lot going on this week. A lot, a lot going on. Um, we have Jesus. Um, you have Alafe, which is on the 23rd. Allen versus Anders on Axis TV. Make sure you guys catch that. You have Cage Warriors 85. UFC Fight Pass, that's on June 24th. That's from uh, Bournemouth, England. You have Bellator 180, Davis versus Bader. That's Bellator's uh, pay-per-view event this weekend. Bellator, New York. You have Vanderlei, you have Mitrion, you have, you have all that. All that and more. <laughs> so you have the spike portion of the card, and then you have the pay-per-view portion of the card. Um, so we'll get to those both right now. But And then you also have UFC Fight Night 112, Kiesa versus Lee. That's this weekend too. Crazy. So, which one do you want to get to first? The Bellator card? Sure. Okay, let's go with the I want to take a look at this undercard here for Bellator. It's not bad here. It's not bad. James Gallagher versus uh Chimzo Machida. Machida. Machida? It's a tough one. I'm gonna go with Gallagher on that one. This to maybe it may be the right decision. Uh Phil Davis versus Ryan Bader. I like Phil Davis in this fight. Yeah? I'll probably go with Phil Davis. I think he'll be the favorite. That one's for the light heavyweight title. Then you have uh on the main card you have Zach Freeman versus Aaron Pico, the debut of Aaron Pico. Mm-hmm. Long away a debut. I don't know. We've heard about that guy for forever. forever. What do you what do you think? Uh, Zach. Zach? Zach Freeman? I'll probably go with Aaron Pico. I think, I mean, I'm just a bit giving him the benefit of the doubt that he's going to 
after all this time that he's going to show yeah, up. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Ch- Michael Chandler versus Brett Primus. Uh, Chandler. Chandler? Um, let's see. I'll go with Chandler. Why not? I'll go with Chandler for the lightweight title. That's a... It's on the main card here. You have Douglas Lima versus Lorenz Larkin for the welterweight title. Oh, that's hard. That's I'm going to go Larkin. You're going to go Larkin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, no one does that for there. <laughs> um, I'll, go, I'll go with Larkin. I'll give him the... Yeah, I'll go with Larkin. Why not? I'm rooting for Larkin in this yeah. one. Um, Fedor versus Matt Mitrione in the co-main event. I like Matt Mitrione. I'm gonna go with Matt Mitchell on too. I think so too. Um, if he could probably withstand the the like the opening flurry of mm-hmm. Fedor and and then kind of turn it around, maybe throw some shots, use his weight up against Fedor. Yeah. I, I see that um, playing into his favor. So I'll probably go with Matt by decision. Chael Sonnen versus Vanderlei Silva as the main event, which. Why they put that as a main event? I, I don't know. know. Yeah. Um, I would have put that as a co-main event, not even like as a co-main event. Yeah, a, a title fight, two fights below that. Yeah, you have two title fights below that. Doesn't make sense. Even if they put the Fedor versus Mitrion as a main event, I think that would be much better than the Chael versus Vanderlei. Since Chael has not looked good, mm-hmm. and we have no idea how Vanderlei is going to look. I, I'm. I want to pick Vanderlei in this way. You, I'm going to pick Vanderlei too. I. I, I just think. Yeah, I'm going to pick Vanderlei. I just, Chael has not looked good, and he should have beat Tito, and he crumbled against Tito. Mm-hmm. And I think he can't beat Tito then now. Yeah, I think he's going to do the same against Vanderlei. I think he's going to crumble against Vanderlei. I think Vanderlei is at least going to be able to compete mm-hmm. at a high level, at a decently high level, where Chael, I think, is just going to, even physically, he doesn't look good. Yeah. Yeah. How would you have set up the main card here, though? I would have, I would have probably put, Maybe Fedor is number one. Yeah. And then Douglas Lima and Chandler and then maybe Chael and Vanderlei as the one or, right after the Freeman or, Pico card. Yeah. Pico oh, card. yeah. I mean, put Chandler. I mean, put um, Chael Sun in, in between the two title fights. In between the two title fights? Yeah. Yeah, it'd give them a break. It'd give it a break in between the two title fights. You could do that. Would you have stuck with the maybe Fedor and Mitrione as a main event? I think you, you so. got you got to sell it because yeah. they, they can't. If so. you put Lima and Larkin and Chandler and all that as a main and co-main event instead of this whole setup, I mean, how many people are really going to buy the yeah. pay per view? So you kind of have to put your names on there. Yeah. But yeah, it's unfortunate because I don't, I don't think uh, Bellator has the luxury at this point to put their main event like their title holders as a main event. They need to put the big names right. still for right now. So, yeah. So, Bellator MMA, NYC, Madison Square Garden is finally here this weekend. It's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, it's going to be on pay per view. I don't know how, how they're going to do. Uh, what do you think? Mm, I think I think the max is th- three hundred thousand. Yeah, I think so too. I'm, I'm just yeah. off the top of my head. I was thinking three. Um, okay, so you also this weekend, June twenty fifth, UFC Fight Night one twelve, uh, Kiesa versus Lee, pretty good card. I mean, I honestly I didn't even know some of these guys were fighting this weekend. Me neither. <laughs> yeah, BJ Penn versus Dennis Seaver this weekend. Have you heard anything regarding that fight at all? I, I mean, Mayweather's been Mayweather and McGregor been nothing, nothing yeah. like nobody's been covering this fight. I mean, look at the card's pretty good. Even on the undercard, you have Clay Guida versus Eric Koch as the main event. Carlos Esparza. Carlos Esparza on there. Vito Miranda. You have uh, who else? Do you have Tony Martin. I don't know, man. <clears throat> but like, just even this main card, it's not bad. No, it's not. BJ Penn versus Dennis Seaver. Who do you have? I'm gonna pick BJ Penn. I'm gonna go BJ Penn. I haven't seen Dennis Seaver in forever. Me neither. When was the last fight? I don't know. I'll go. I'll go. BJ Penn, uh, Alex Garcia versus Tim Means. Tim Means. I'll go Tim Means too. Uh, Jacome Christensen versus Dominic Reyes. Mm, I don't know. Jacqueline, I guess. I yeah, I know. I don't. I don't relate too much about those guys either. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Felice Heron versus Justine Quiche. Felice. Probably Felice, huh? She's a little good at it as of late. Tim Bosch versus Johnny Hendricks. Very interesting. Tim Bosch. Tim Bosch. Yeah, Tim Bosch, too. Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, I'll go with Tim Bosch. He lost his last fight, but I think... I think Thank you. And I, I think Johnny Hendricks won his last fight. He did, yeah. Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Lee in the main event. This is a heated one from this, the press conference that they had recently. I like Chiesa. Chiesa? I hope I'm rooting for Chiesa because I, 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 I don't mind a lot of guys that are brash and cocky he's, or whatever. He's too much. But Kevin Lee is a little just annoying. It's almost like. And then he always has to like. Bad mouth McGregor. Forever. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know. I get it. I get it. you're talking. You're you're making a big. You're trying to make, a, you know, a name. You put your name you out put there. Your name out there. I get it. But there's. I see right through it though. Yeah, it's it, you see right through it, and it's just not authentic. And even if it is, it's almost like I don't. It's, you know, it's, it, it's like one of those douchebags at a party. Yeah, you're like he's like that douchebag at the party, and yeah. like you cannot like a guy like that. No, it's like. No one's gonna root for you. No, at all. No. Nope. You know? At least with like a someone who is a little cocky, like maybe I don't know, I don't know who. You have you can find some relation. You see it as being more for show, and you don't really see them as that person, or you get their angle, I guess. But you make excuses. You you like them. Yeah. You see him as a good person or whatever. Kevin Lee, I don't. I see him almost as that guy. Like almost as the the cocky jerk at the party. Guy. Yeah, he and, is, and, and it just took, it rubs me the wrong way. And I'm like, just on that fact alone, I think I'm like just I'm rooting for a Kies. Yeah, me too. Kies all the way. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough though. Kevin Lee's no joke, so we'll see. Um, really, really uh, awesome fight card yeah, lineup this weekend. I mean, it's packed full. I don't even know if we're gonna have oh, time DVR to watch all of it. We're gonna have to, our DVR is gonna be full. So, be um, that's it. That's our show. Uh, thank you to Stephen for being on the show. Uh, thank you for all you guys watching. Go to MMAComplex.com, pick up the new shirts, and get out with all everything MMA Complex. You can also follow us on social media. You can follow me on Twitter, MMA Complex James. Follow him, MMA Complex Josh. You can follow the show on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all under the MMA Complex. Big, big fights uh, weekend. Josh and I are trying to cover all the fights for you guys next week. Till then, enjoy the fights and enjoy your week.